Hey guys, Mike from Keats Woodworks here. Hey, thanks for clicking on the video. Hey, I want to show you today how to build this pantry. So I was asked by my niece to build this pantry for her. Uh, they bought an older home and really had limited space. It didn't have a built-in pantry like most homes do now. And so she said, hey, would you build me one? And she told me, just think bookshelf with doors and so that's basically what we have here just real simple build um, we got some adjustable shelving and some drawers in the bottom with some bottom storage space uh, very simple build uh, a lot of fun to do and one i know that they're going to love and one i know that you will love too so check it out so the first thing i do is to get my little craig pocket hole jig handheld uh, deal here and set up uh, the sides for mounting it to the tops and bottoms. And yes, I am using an older handheld, very uh, simple pocket hole jig here. Uh, I know they make better, bigger ones. And one of these days I'll get one. So then I'm just clean it up and uh, get ready to cut the uh, top and bottom. And just use a simple one by 12 here and put it against the stop and then just cut. I have to flip it over because it's one by 12. I do have a 12 inch saw, saw but it, um, is not a sliding saw. So this is my method for doing that. Then it's just a matter of mounting up the sides to the top. I've already pinholed uh, the, or made those pinholes for the adjustable shelves. Uh, put a little glue on these and then tie, uh, screw them into place. I had to do still shots here because something corrupted the video. Uh, you see me putting the bottom one on and then I put in the uh, little box there area for the bottom drawers. Put it over on the driveway and laid it out and just pulled the corners for square and I have to make an adjustment or two and get it dialed in. Once I do, I like to put these little cross members in place just to kind of keep it from moving because I'll be moving it around a good little bit. And about that time, my wife steps into the shot and starts telling me things about the kids. And it's about at this moment when she realizes that she is on camera. <laughs> so I thought I'd leave that in there for you guys. So next I was going to edge band the shelves. I cut them out of three quarter inch, I believe it was birch plywood and just use an old iron here since my wife upgraded. Works great. And you just iron those on and trim them to fit. Make sure all the glue is uh, securing everything nice and well. And then you just trim it and use a nice little edge trimmer and uh, use that. And then I just take a little 220 on a block and sand everything down nice and smooth and gets it nice for the, th uh, for the feel and for the touch uh, of your hand. So when I mount the top to really anything, tables or otherwise, I always just mark the centers and the sides and then just line up my lines. Works perfect every time to get something centered. So I'm showing you that here with this still shot. Next, I was attaching the top and I did that just by drilling some holes and putting some screws in. I did plug these screws. I also tacked it from the top with a little bit of glue uh, just didn't want that thing moving at all. Of course, it's not going to. So here I am plugging those. Of course, they sanded down nice and smooth, made for a real nice finish. Then I did all that because I was putting in these trim pieces. I put one on the bottom and on the top and had to miter the corners, and I just wanted those to be really nice and tight. And here I'm going to show you how I do that. So I made this little uh, miter jig. Lots of guys have these. Lots of saws have them. And I always take mine and put it on whenever I'm using it for this purpose. And it allows me to see exactly where the blade is going to cut. I'm not really good at geometry and angles. A lot of guys do this a whole lot better than I do. You can see right there, it's going to line up. It's going to tell me exactly where that line is going to be. So this is how I do it. Uh, and uh, it works really well. So got the miters all in place and put those in and got it all trimmed out. It's really good. Next was to uh, set the drawer or get the drawers going. And so basically setting up the table saw here. And I'm going to make those out of some half-inch birch plywood. So I'm just cutting out the boxes here. And this works really well. And as I get ready to make the other pieces, uh, I basically am using just the simple miter gauge that came with the saw. It's a rigid saw. Works great. Fairly new saw, actually. I haven't made a cross-cut sled yet, but uh, I'll be doing that soon. But for now, this is working well. So then I just take the pieces I've cut, and uh, what I like to do in this type of situation is I make a little hand pull out. So I just measure in, I think it was maybe three or four inches from each end, uh, an inch down at a 45 degree angle, and then I just join the lines. And then I, when I do that, of course you've got to still it because it kept moving around on me. Uh, I do that, and I just take it over to the bandsaw and just cut out those uh, notches. 
and it works out really, really well. So I did this for this one. Uh, I didn't put two drawers in the bottom, so I did it for both, and I'm just showing you here how that happened. So then, after I got that done, I took it over to my router table, which is mounted into my bench. And this is a really old router table. I think my dad gave me this years ago. And I've had it. I finally mounted it in my bench. Works really good. I'm just cutting out the notch or routing out the notch here for the drawer bottom. Since then, actually during this job, I acquired this nice Bosch router table. This thing's awesome. And uh, it's got all kind of attachments. It's great. It's got the nice fence. It's got dust collection on it. And I'm just showing you here how, how I was using it. Uh, now, since then, I have mounted it in my bench. And this is kind of what that looks like. And it gives me a little bit more surface area. This is a little portable bench. I roll around my garage. It works fantastic. So now I'm just going to mount those drawers up or, or assemble them. So basically the way I do that, just run a little glue. Uh, put a little... A brad nail in there and hold it in place. Of course, I hide those later and putty them all up and everything. It hides them pretty good. I know there's other ways to make drawers, probably a little more finer woodworking ways, uh, but this way works for me. You can see I've already round over the edge on the pull pull out section of the drawer. I haven't sanded everything nice and fine yet, but um, that's kind of how that comes together. Then when I put the bottoms in, really the way I do it is I just put a little bit of blue, uh, a bead of a glue there uh, in that front notch. And, uh, and slide the drawer bottom in. I made the doors out of one by fours. Uh, actually, I made two sets of doors, as you can see here. The first set didn't come out so good. So I made one by fours, I notched out the edges, laid in a quarter inch, and um, made those. They worked out a whole lot better than the previous version. So here I am doing some uh, staining. I think I used an early American stock uh, Minwax color, and uh, they came out great. Next, I just wanna show you real quick how I did the hinges and real simple you just basically figure out where you want them to be or where they need to be and uh, you just make your marks uh, you need a kind of a, a, a longer line uh, for each one to use the jig I'm going to use and I'm going to show you that right here so basically just use a Craig hinge jig works great and uh, you mount up the thing in the drill and I use my uh, dust collection there and uh, drill it out I'm fixing to show you a close-up of that and what that looks like uh, just give you a bit better view so here i am drilling the last one again there's a line on the piece there's a line on the jig two gray buttons there are offsets to let you know basically exactly where you know your your hole is going to line up and how much distance there is between the edge of the door and the hole and so every situation is different and so here i am just doing that and uh, you can see i use the dust collection thing there too so this thing like will produce these huge shavings that fill up that slot of that whole area and you can't see what you're doing and everything so this just works out really good and when you get it all said and done voila the hole is ready for a hinge and just wanted to show you that too real simple routine here i think these were bloom hinges if i'm saying that right uh, that i just picked up at the local hardware store uh, i just uh, set those in place to square them up and uh, get my holes hopefully right in the center of those other holes I do attach these uh, by hand versus my drill. Uh, I just like to uh, like to feel the, t the tension of that a lot better. And then when I get on mount, mount the doors, here's the finished piece. Uh, you can see it with the drawer bottoms and then the adjustable shelves. And then here's a piece, a picture of it in context uh, with uh, she got it all loaded down. Hey, give me a like if you like this one. Thumbs up there and hit the subscribe button. For future videos, here's some other places that you can find me. Thanks so much for watching. Always love feedback. We'll see you guys next time.